What's up everyone and welcome to part one in the series of how to get good at using Procreate. Now, in this part we're going to be covering the basics of the program. So, without further ado, let's check it out. All right, so let's go over how to navigate through this interface in Procreate. So to open up an image, you just tap on it, just like that, and we've opened up the image. Now, if you want to go back, you click on the gallery view up in the left corner. So now we're back to where we started. Now, if you want to store a number of images together in a stack or a group, what you do is you tap on select over here, and then you select the images that you want to group together, and then you simply tap on stack and this is going to pull all of these images together in a single stack now if you tap on it right away you're just going to select it because we have the selection tool enabled now you have to tap out of that and then you can click into the stack and these are the images that we have stacked together so let's continue on with the selection functionality so we tap on select and we select the images all of the images and now we have a couple of options we have share duplicate and delete and also cancel so if we duplicate the images, it's just going to do exactly what it should do. It's going to duplicate all of the images. It's going to create a copy of every image. We can then delete the duplicates right away. I'm just going to do that. And then we have the third option, or the first option, essentially, which is share. Now, share allows us to back up the image to the iPad. So if you tap on that, you'll be able to save the image to the iPad or to the cloud essentially. So you can create a backup by tapping on share and choose the appropriate format. Now there's another way of accessing this functionality and that's by swiping to the left and that reveals the quick options like delete, duplicate and share. So if we tap on share, we see the same options. We can export to the Procreate format, the PSD, PDF, JPEG, PNG or a TIFF. So you should be covered when it comes to backing up your files or sharing them online. Now, let's take a look at the import function. And the import function essentially does exactly what the name suggests. It imports things into Procreate. So, for example, you could import something that you saved on your iCloud account or your Dropbox. You can just tap on import, and then you can select the appropriate file that you want to import into Procreate. And so we just tap on this one, for example, and it starts importing the image and downloading it from the cloud to the iPad. And it opens it up, and voila! we get to see the image. Now, what's cool about this is it retains all of the layer information that I had on the original image. So even the ones that I didn't want to show, even the ones that I chose to hide, it also retains those. So it does create a complete backup of your artwork. Now, there's another way of doing this, and that's by swiping up from the bottom and dragging the Files app to the screen. And there you can navigate to a folder that you have backed up your artworks to, and then just simply dragging and dropping them into Procreate. And that's gonna import the artworks into Procreate and you can start using them. Now it's extremely important to keep backups of your files whenever possible, because you never know, maybe your iPad might crash one day and you'll lose everything. So be careful. Anyway, let's talk about renaming. So rename by tapping on the name of the artwork, and then you can give it a name like whatever you want. So name it whatever you want and you're good to go. Now if you want to rotate your canvas without opening it up, you can just simply rotate it directly in the gallery view. It's pretty simple. Just rotate it, rotate it like this. Pretty simple. Now we've talked about select and import, but let's talk about the photo. Now, if you tap on photo, you'll be able to import a photo into Procreate. So it's very simple. It just creates a photo canvas that is the exact same size as the photo itself. So that's how you do that. All right, now let's talk about creating and customizing your canvas. So start by tapping on the plus icon to create a new canvas. And what I would recommend starting with is the screen size, because that's just going to create a screen sized canvas that has the exact dimensions as the screen. Now, there are a couple of other options here, like the square, the A4, and some of the other ones here are some that I've created myself. 
Now you can add to this, delete, uh, and change this as you wish. And if you want to add to this list, you tap on this button here, create custom canvas. And then you specify the width. Now I'm going to put 1080 because that's the width of the YouTube video. And then we specify the height and the DPI basically refers to how many dots per inch should be displayed. So 72 is basically the default for web-based stuff and a medium quality canvas would be about 150. If you're going to be doing high quality prints, I would recommend going as far as 300 here. Now, the color gamut here, uh, I've set it to sRGB, but if you have the newest generation of the iPad, you can get it to P3 color gamut. That's just going to give you more colors to work with. Now, you rename the artwork by tapping here, uh, set it to whatever you want. And in this box, you can change a couple of parameters. You can change it to showing millimeters or centimeters or inches or the default, which is pixels. And that's what we're going to be working with today. Now, the final thing that I want to point your attention to is the maximum layers. Now, maximum layers is going to specify how many layers you're going to be able to have based on the width and the height of the canvas. So if you change the width and the height of the canvas, you're going to see that it dropped to 51 here. If you increase it to something like 90,000, you're going to see it's going to say too large because the iPad just can't handle such big images. So change it to 5,000. We're going to see we're going to be able to work with 95 layers here. Now let's set this back to the default YouTube aspect ratio, which is 1920 by 1080. And let's create our first canvas. All right, so the first things first, if you have the Apple Pencil, you can have it so that when you draw lightly, it creates thin strokes. If you press really down, it's gonna create thick strokes. If you wanna undo what you just drawn, you just tap with two fingers and it's gonna remove it. Tap with three fingers and it's gonna redo. So that's pretty simple. Two fingers, undo, three fingers, redo. Now, if you wanna control the size of the brush, that's this one over here. Drag it down to decrease it. Drag it up to increase the size. So make big strokes, make thinner strokes, make even thinner strokes, and so on and so forth. Now, this one over here is gonna control the opacity. So if you're gonna do some shading work, then I'd recommend decreasing the opacity and go at it. Increase it to show more and increase it to show even more, etc., etc. You get the idea. So let's undo all of this and I'm going to show you a cool trick. So let's say that you want to make a very straight line from one point to another. And you're trying to draw and you do your best, but oops, there's a slight curve in the drawing. So how can you rectify this? Well, you could use a ruler, but there's a much easier way to do this in Procreate. What you do is you draw the line and then you hold and that's gonna snap to a perfectly straight line. So you draw and hold and it snaps and you can even move it after the fact and reposition it something like this, for example. And one amazing thing is that you can actually reposition it after you've drawn the point. So what you do is you tap on this icon over here, and then you can reposition the straight line as you wish. So even after you've drawn it, you can reposition it. Uh, it went a little bit wonky there, but you get the idea. You can draw and create a straight line and then reposition it after the fact. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that if you draw a straight line like this and then you move the points and then you tap out of it and then tap back in, then it's gonna go into the selection tool. So you're not gonna be able to readjust the points so how can you modify this? So basically, it's very simple. You tap undo, and that's gonna go back into the points. So if you find yourself in a pickle and you're trying to uh, get the points back, just remember, undoing will do the trick. There we go. And now the quick line tool also works the same way with the smudge tool. So if you do a smudge, like this and you're trying to keep it very straight you can snap to a quick line and do the smudging that way and um, so also works the same with the eraser tool so just try to erase a straight line and then hold and it snaps to a perfectly straight line 
Now let's undo all of these changes and go back to a blank state. So what you do is you double tap and hold in order to undo everything. Double tap with three fingers and hold, and that's gonna redo everything. So it's basically just a quicker way to undo or redo a lot of changes at once. Now that's gonna do it for this video. I wanna thank you all very much for watching. If you wanna check out the next video where I'm gonna be talking about gestures, click on this one over here. If you wanna see another video of mine that I made, click on this one. Subscribe to the channel by clicking here. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Anyways, I wanna thank you all very much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.